got him. There he is. <laughs> what do we got? What do we got here? I cannot tell. Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that I love to discuss, and that is crankbait fishing, but a very specific type of crankbait that I feel like doesn't get the uh, talk that it used to. Let me land this fish real quick. Get in here. There we go. And that right there is the shallow diving crankbait. Today we're gonna to talk about why I use it, what time of the year I use it, and of course, the best ways to use it to catch. Hold up, give me a second. My punchline is coming. Bass like this. Let's talk about it. Today's video is sponsored by gluten-free ciabatta rolls. But you know who it is sponsored by? Bass Forecast. And let me tell you about who that is. Bass Forecast is a fishing weather forecasting app that I've used for a long time now uh, to kind of plan and make my fishing days more effective than they already were before. And so I will have a link to download Bass Forecast below. It is a free app, completely free. Now what Bass Forecast does is that it, it pulls the weather together through AccuWeather and a crazy algorithm they have written as a company. They're geniuses over there. Um, they write an algorithm to tell how good your fishing day is going to be on a rank from 1 to 10. So today we have a 6. I'll have the screen over here to the right screen recorded but also uh, of course I can tell my days in advance so if I want to come out here on Saturday it's gonna be a 5.1 Sunday 5.1 5.2 I don't want to come out here next Monday or Tuesday though because or Tuesday or Wednesday because the rating drops so let's say you only get a certain amount of days to fish per year you want to plan what days you want to fish that is a feature that I would definitely recommend and they're also able to tell you where the bass should be for presentation it has medium fast and then slow so it's gonna say that your medium retrieves are gonna be best and of course reeling that crankbait as slow as I could that is a nice medium retrieve and baits Look at that, it was crankbait and medium diving crankbait. I kind of mixed those two for a nice shallow diving option because I know the water is a little bit dirty here today. With that said, the Bass Forecast link is down below if you guys want to download it and give it a try. Uh, I have so many testimonials from actual friends of mine that were skeptical at first, downloaded the app, have been using it, and uh, they are blown away by how accurate it is and how helpful it is to them to catch more fish. So before I hit the bank, we're gonna catch more fish. So people are always asking me on social media what my favorite technique is, what my favorite lure is. And I guess the question most often posed is, what's your favorite bass lure? And the answer I always give is a square bill crankbait. But really, it's kind of a lie. What I mean by that is I like crankbaiting in general. I don't care if it's a square bill. I don't care if it's a wake bait or a 10XD. I like crankbaiting in general. I just think it's one of the most fun ways to catch fish. And especially here in the south, one of the most effective throughout the winter and spring months, really, really all year round. I don't know, not just winter and spring. And so that's why I want to talk about the shallow diving crankbait today. I think a crankbait that's, that's pretty much overlooked, uh, I would say with the exception being the middle of the country. I think in states like Missouri, Arkansas, uh, Tennessee, I think you find a lot more shallow diving crankbaits. But uh, at least in my experience here in the south, most people have kind of overlooked, you know, the little four to eight foot diving crankbaits and kind of replace those with you know the chatterbait the square bill crankbait and kind of more seemingly fun lures to catch fish on and uh, much like the spinnerbait lost a lot of its luster for for several years i think this bait is currently being incredibly overlooked by a lot of anglers and uh, i love catching fish on it so the shallow diving crankbait i'm going to be using in today's video is the strike king uh, series three, I believe it could be a series four. No, I think it's I think it's a series three, and it dives to about five to six feet. I guess four to six feet, just barely deeper than a square bill crankbait like the 1.5 or 2.5. And the reasoning for why I'm throwing this bait right now is because the water is just a little bit too cold for a square bill. I'm sure you could catch them on a square bill. You're gonna comment and say, Tyler, you're an idiot. I can catch fish on a square bill when the water's 37. Of course you can. But in my opinion, the fish right now, the water temperature is 55. So these fish are not quite uh, incredibly uh, pre-spawn aggressive, but it's definitely into the pre-spawn late winter here in Texas. And so I'm throwing the shallow diving crankbait because I know these fish want to be up shallow getting ready, but they are not quite aggressive enough 
for the square bill crankbait. That's where I think this thing excels. Uh, in situations where you know the, the shallow cranking bite is on, usually a square bill would catch them, but let's say you have a cold front roll through, or you just have cold weather in general, kind of you know getting off of the, the winter time patterns. I think a shallow diving crankbait like this has an incredibly large spot on my boat deck this time of the year. So talking about location when throwing a shallow diving crankbait, completely depends on where your fish are at in the stage of, I guess, the winter spawn transition. I mean, you can throw this thing throughout the year, but right now I'm talking about kind of the, the early springtime. And it also depends what species of bass you're going for and what type of cover you have. So today we're on a highland reservoir. It is fairly clear water, uh, a little bit dingy right now, I think because of the rain that we had. Um, but usually about you know eight to ten foot visibility, pretty dang clear. A bunch of rock, as you can see, mostly like small pea gravel type stuff. But then you do have a lot of the lake that is bluff walls, kind of like this. Um, and so today I'm decided to focus on a lot of the you know steeper banks on the main lake. Those fish that may have been you know suspended out in the middle are kind of sliding up to feed, and then are going to slide back into the pockets to spawn. And so it completely depends on, on where your fish are. So let's say you are in a, uh, let's say in an East Texas, Louisiana fishery where it's, it's mostly grass and sticks. You know those fish are going to be sitting in the ditches and the drains and a shallow diving crankbait might not be your best choice. You know, a, a lipless crankbait might be better or a, a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. But the shallow diving crankbait definitely still can work. Uh, I would just say keep it up off of the grass a little bit more than you would, you know, a lipless crankbait. And if you're in, a, let's say, a Tennessee river system, you know, those fish are going to be just coming off the main channel from the winter time, sitting on those points, sitting on those, uh, you know, rock jetties and, and structures sticking out, like I said, feeding up, getting ready for that spawn time of year. And there's really not a whole lot more in terms of location I can talk about. You know, it's, it's just getting your crankbait in front of the fish's mouth. I think this time of the year, as I'll talk about in retrieval a little bit, these fish are not necessarily uh, reaction based in, the, in this type of water color or water clarity. These fish are more kind of roaming and searching things out. And if they happen to see a bait that passes by them, they're going to eat it. You know, in East Texas, I feel like those fish are kind of hunkered down in the grass. In Minnesota, especially in the free spawn, uh, those fish really want something ripped by their face, so they have to react and eat it. This, I think, is a little bit different of a situation. You know, when I'm fishing the shallow diving crankbait like this, I'm not necessarily uh, concerned with the bait always making contact with the bottom. Usually when you are throwing uh, you know, a crankbait, you want it to be bouncing off the bottom, having all kinds of action to make that fish react to it. I think this time of the year, fish honestly probably want that bait to be a little bit off the bottom, of course, deflecting off cover whenever you can, but I'm not always trying to make you know, the shallowest cast possible to keep my bait in contact. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure I'm in the right areas that those fish are at, because uh, I feel like those fish are going to bite no matter if it's touching the bottom or if it's not. I think if they're feeding on bait fish like these fish are today, uh, those fish are going to eat it however it's presented. Now with that said, don't be casting this thing, you know, out in the middle of the lake. That's not, you know, the best strategy. Unless those fish are suspended or schooling out there. But today they're not. And so I'm just making sure that I'm keeping my bait, like I said, dives four to six feet. I'm keeping it within that area off the bank. I'm imagining the slope of the bank and I'm saying, all right, you know, five feet off the bank is probably right where the prime strike zone for this lure is. If I cast a little shallower, a little deeper, doesn't really matter to me. I usually end up catching fish no matter you know where I am in the cast. Those fish are just kind of going to roam by and see it. There's one. Just like that. Just like that, folks. Just like that. Good timing. What? Oh, he came off. Dang it. Ah. I don't think he was big. He wasn't fighting very hard. But uh, going to make another cast in there. But what was interesting about that, as I just talked about, is that, that that bait was not bouncing off the bottom when that fish hit. I had hopped off of probably the last rock of a little ledge before it got to deeper water, and that fish hit as it was in open water, not as it was making contact with the bottom. So, proves my point. Do not have to make in contact with the bottom. With really any crankbait, a square bill, I feel like most of the time you have to, but especially a bait like this little uh, Series 3 crankbait. You do not have to. These fish are going to... There's one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a big one, I think. That oh it's a big one. That's a big one. Okay. We're gonna back the camera up a little bit so y'all can see what's going on here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Oh ho 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 ho. Oh it's a big small mouth. It's a big small mouth. Is it? Oh, are you kidding me? Is this thing a drum? Oh. 
I got a gas burgoo. I knew it was fighting kind of weird. All right, there's your classic Texas uh, freshwater drum. Definitely a cool fish. I'm never against catching a gas burgoo, although I did just trash talk this fish all the way in. They're just so deceiving. They fight like a small mouth, and we got lots of small mouth out here on this body of water. But what they do is they eat, uh, is they eat crankbaits really well. And by really well, I mean it, get them real stuck in there. Well, you know what? Not the fish that I wanted, but I'll take, I'll take a good gas burgoo on a Thursday afternoon. Beautiful, thank you, buddy. Go off and uh, eat somebody else's crankbait on tournament day. I would trick them. Since we're on a roll, and I'm hoping to catch more fish on this bank here, I'm going to talk about retrieval. So, as you guys know, if you ever fished a crankbait, there are so many different ways you can retrieve them. Fast, slow, pause and go. That rhymed. That was good. There's so many ways that you can bring that crankbait back to you. And I think the, the beginner angler oftentimes just kind of casts it out there, reels it back in, and that works. I'm not going to lie to you and say that doesn't work because it does, uh, especially with lures like spinnerbait. Spinnerbait is definitely a, a simple man's lure. You cast it out there and bring it back to you. But yes, fish are definitely a little bit moody and they like to, uh, they like to have their food presented in the way that they want it on that day. And so today, I'm guessing it's just a straight retrieve kind of day. But some days, especially when you have a lot of fishing pressure around you, you're gonna have to reel it straight in, pause it, you know, give it two, two jerks, three jerks. I mean, sometimes I've had days where I've had to, you know, cast it out there, reel, jerk, jerk, reel, jerk, almost like a, a very, very fast jerk bait retrieve. Those fish just wanna react to it like crazy. But sometimes, like in, in my experience, most fish with this lure, uh, you know, throughout the, the, the springtime, they want it retrieved as slow as possible, occasionally giving it a pause and speeding it up to go back slow again. That's generally the retrieve that I'm using, and I just find that works best. I think it, it, it fits the way this crankbait was designed to be fished. You know, you can burn this crankbait back to the boat, but I think this crankbait was designed just body style uh, for a little bit colder water and a little bit uh, colder bodied of a fish. You know, the fish are not incredibly aggressive. They just want a nice crankbait swimming right next to their head, giving it a pause every once in a while. Uh, I do have a video out here from the winter time throwing uh, I believe it was a series five. It, it dove a little bit deeper, dove about eight to 10 feet. And I will link that over, uh, up in the corner and down below. I caught my old PB smallmouth. It was uh, 4.45 pounds out here on Lake Belton, which for Texas is a big smallmouth bass. Uh, and that fish came on a pause. So I felt something slap at it. The fish probably missed it. Then I kind of gave it two more reels, pause, reel, and he got it. So the fish, you know, was, was it was, following the bait, it, it, I gave it a pause, then as soon as I reeled it again, that fish committed to it. And that's exactly how all the fish that day in that video wanted the crankbait presented. I think I weighed in 12 pounds for four fish, so four fish limit. So, you know, average of three pounds of fish was pretty good for that day. And those fish told me exactly how they wanted that bait retrieved. And I know this video is about shallow diving crankbaits, but never miss the opportunity to throw a little shaky head around a standing tree. It's a bad idea to not do that. I will also have a shaky head video coming out from this day as well. I'm gonna film a little bit of a confidence lure video. Spoiler alert, it's the shaky head. Last thing I'm gonna talk about this video is the gear that I'm throwing a shallow diving crankbait on. Uh, it's, it's about the same combo. I rarely ever switch it up, and it is the Luz Custom Speed Stick 6'9 Medium Heavy Square Bill Crankbait Rod by far my favorite rod that Luz makes in the custom speed stick line. I throw everything from square bills to spinner baits to uh, chatter baits, you know, lighter, you know, three eighths, quarter ounce chatter baits, everything on this rod and reel. I have the BB1 Pro uh, speed spool. It's definitely the best crankbait reel on the market. You try it for yourself, incredibly smooth cast so far and holds a heck of a ton of line, has a big spool size. And then I have 10 pound Seaguar Abrazex fluorocarbon, the best crankbait fluorocarbon out there. And like always, all the information on today's video will be linked down in the description below, all the tackle, any other details you may need. Of course, any sort of, uh, you know, sponsor discount. So I have 15% off AFCO products down below. I've got Connect Scale discount. I got everything, everything you could ever need. If you're looking to buy a house in the Austin area, my dad is a real estate agent. He's got his information down there too. Oh, it's a good time. There's one. There's one, hey! It's not a big smallmouth, but it's a smallmouth. And boom, that right there is a beautiful Texas 
smallmouth bass caught on the shallow diving crankbait. Just like that. Look at him. Look at that little guy. He's so cute. He'd like half a pound. Well, with that fish caught, we're going to end that video right there. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button to join me on all my adventures, both catching big fish and uh, teaching you guys how to do it. And of course, if you guys like this stuff, I put out three videos like this a week, teaching you guys how to catch more bass and be more effective anglers. But I also love to do challenges, tournaments, all that fun stuff within the fishing community. So hit that subscribe button, turn that post notification bell on. That way you guys never miss another video. And we'll see you all in the next episode of TRF.